Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, this is Jeeves here, your old composer here on the Decomposer Lounge Patreon. And um, you know what I love what's happening right now on Patreon is I'm, I'm getting my, my list is getting a little thick here and I'm getting through it, but you guys are taking me through some new music and this is what I'm looking forward to uh, with your suggestions and uh, especially coming up with my next year on the channel. And so here I have never heard of this band. Uh, the Moth Gatherer, and the song is Pale Explosions. So, Patreon members, super mahalo for all the suggestions. So let's do this. Sorry. Early in the morning. And I actually don't have any coffee. <laughs> you guys are going to die laughing. This goes to show you how old I am. Fresca. Fresca. Okay, all you guys stop laughing. I can hear the old guys laughing. The young guys going, what the hell is that? Does it come with a pack of Depends? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. Brand new band, brand new experience, and uh, thank you, you know who, here on Patreon who suggested it. All right. The Moth Gatherer, Pale Explosions. All right. Okay, I know I just came into a big brick wall of sound right here, and I'm going to move it back. I completely love the fact that that opening, and they see now this, I can only see the picture here on Spotify. It looks like four gentlemen here. And so I don't know what the actual band, <coughs> excuse me, makeup of the band is. Keyboards, guitars, two guitar players, bass, drum, um, with overdubs that are done in the studio. But I loved how that opening uh, was da, da, da. But then the guitar came in and was da, da, da and caused this really super, it wasn't quite dissonant, but there was this little pull for me there. And that really kind of sucked me in and stuff. And then when the power came with just the drums, it was just, I, it just was a snare and a tom that, that seemed to have come in. And I had to question for a second uh, if that was kind of a hybrid sampled combo or something. You know, I try not to get too deep in trying to figure out because uh, like certain things, like is that a sample, is that being triggered, what's going on there? Uh, because I'm really kind of just getting into the energy and the power of, of, of the tone structure of the composition. And then, uh, and then it comes in with this really, as the guitar and everything really plows into it, and then that super dark, heavy vocal that's way down in the mix. And that actually sounds more of an, an arrangement that's, that's associated with the heaviness of the guitar. But as it now pulls it around and, and started slamming into this next section, 
what I really loved is the fact that now we had the vocals that came in that played more of a powerful uh, role melodically through this and they slipped the guitars back in the mix and really let the kind of the vocals kind of crystallize if you would with the melody that they were singing and it had this long powerful ambient wall sound but it was very very well mixed tonally so it wasn't muddied up um, you know sometimes on purpose you know there'll be bands like let's say um Devin Townsend and and I'm not by no stretch of the imagination are his mixes muddied up but sometimes there's so much going on in the wall of sounds uh, that there could be multiple layers here and I am hearing it's I, I kind of got a feel that I'm hearing a little bit of a synth uh, sequencer or, or or melodic work secondary level hooky um, melodic composition but because I don't know the makeup of the band it very well could be just layered guitars you know so anyhow we just hit this big wall of how do you do here so let me go back a little bit and let's get into that <laughs> Okay, I want to just bring up really quick, uh, I loved what they did right there with those eighths, uh, so that it seemed like uh, there was a time shift in there, uh, but it was actually, it seemed like to me, like it was on the eighths, but it's where you come in and accent, uh, you know, we're always used to kind of hooking in on the one, where's the downbeat and stuff, I loved what they did there, something else too, is you saw me doing this, and that's where it just feels like to me, and it sounds like to me that there's... Um, what we would call sweep synths. So these are synths that have very analog or sometimes digital gritty sounds, but when you hit the pad, when you hit the octave, it does this kind of swelling and then kind of growls and sweeps in and sweeps out. You know, and it kind of, the, the volume kind of envelopes a little bit as well. And I really love that integration in there. If this is what it is, if this is kind of a hybrid metal presentation. Um, I'm really digging it. Also, going back into the heavier part where it really walled up the, again with the sound and the mix pushed a little hotter in the guitars with the darker, heavier vocals, I was catching a little bit of the lyrics and it's pretty heavy. Everything we love, we leave behind or something like that. I could have swore I caught. Uh, but you know how I am about the lyrics. You know, I'm not, I'm not really kind of diving into this on the first listen because I'm listening to the vocalist as an instrument because they are. Um, but I did like how that wall of sound kind of shut down a little bit and some of the ambience slipped away with this very powerful presentation in the mix and then they got into that riff you know uh, 
you, I, you can kind of call it a riff, but the chugging that was going there on the off time that give you that kind of uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, you know, that whole thing, it really just got me. For me as a composer, I just like that kind of stuff, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. Yeah, so here you go. That was a great instrumental kind of, you know, breather for the track. <clears throat> you know what I really found is really clever use uh, of in an engineering technique is that there seems to be, uh, at least my ears telling me, um, multiple reverbs going on here, which is very unique. Uh, and engineers that know how to do this or when the right time is to do this, this is a really super cool thing to do. If we listen to what we just heard, you go back and listen to that. This guitar sounded like it had kind of a, a long plate on it. A plate is a kind of reverb. There are many different reverbs that engineers can choose from. Everything that's really intimate, like room sounds and, you know, bar sounds, club sounds, small club sounds, you know, um, all the way up to cathedrals and churches and stadiums and stuff, and, and plates is one of them, chambers. And in this guitar had sounded like a, a, ch uh, a plate on it that had stereo uh, send to it. So in other words, even though it's playing on this side with a, a stereo reverb, the reverb or the ambience of that reverb is in stereo, blah, 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 right? But this guitar was really kind of like what we would call um, uh, a dry, wet mix of the sound. Uh, what that dictates how much of the signal is being affected by the reverb. If it's 100, then what you're all only going to hear is 100% of the reverb post the send of that that sound. That sound sends in there, but then you're not hearing any of the organic sound. You're only hearing the reverb uh, result of it. And then you mix that. You can do a 2080 mix, etc., etc. Well, this one uh, seems to be like it's mixed maybe at a 50-50, but here's the cool thing. This is a mono reverb. So in other words, it had its own pocket even though it doesn't give you an ambient vibe of, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, a stereo effect in the ears, it, ha it lives in its own little pocket. And that's a really super unique use of engineering techniques and stuff. So, so it looks like we were about to hit another uh, big wall of sound here. So let me go back a minute. Let's do it.
You know, a lot of times um, when we have a song that has this really big wind out, uh, and it just, you know, a pattern it repeated itself at literally for almost about two minutes and stuff. You know, if you're a fan of, of the band, or if you're a fan of that kind of long tail fade, as I would say, where it's just a pattern that just repeats and stuff with occasional flares of uh, arrangement nuances. Nothing big was really happening. Nothing, no big changes were happening there in the arrangement. But for me, what it is, is that this is that point. And it, it's, it might be hard for me to, to explain because I'm a media composer. I write to visuals. You know, or even if I get a job saying, hey, from a library, let's just say, hey, we need you to do X amount of motivational tracks in the style of whatever. Let's say it's acid jazz or whatever, but it has to be motivational and stuff. And I'm always, because I write long pieces for music libraries, um, I always, and you can't get, you can't move around too much because really that's going to be music that's going to bed a visual you know, that's, a, that's an audio bed for a visual presentation. These long tail kind of endings, to me, are, are like really super long sonic brush strokes in theater of the mind. If, you're, if you've made it to this part of the song, you've really enjoyed it and stuff, and especially if you've gone back and read the lyrics and it means something to you as it starts to formulate that story, whatever that means to you and your interpretation of the lyrics, this ending of it is one of those things where you just can get lost in it. You know, it's not that you're really listening to it for any particular reason, like it's, you know, really chuggy, it's really this, no. Something in a pattern that repeats like this just kind of lets you, for me, I guess, you know, you just kind of sit back and glide. You just can just look out and just glaze out there and whatever, whatever the subject matter is and whatever the song means to you or whatever it's evoking, you know, theater of the mind wise. It just keeps you on that track, and you can just go, hey, 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 just, you know, not a reference to being baked or anything, but I'm just saying you could just sit there in meditative kind of trance, be it metal. It doesn't, you know, meditation music doesn't necessarily have to be the softer stuff. It has to be something that just drives you forward. It takes, takes you to another place, and that's what that tail end does. So, anyhow, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you so much. Uh, this was, uh, let me move this dumb thing out of the way here. Um, the Moth Gatherer. I want to thank you and Patreon here who suggested this. And the name of the song is Pale Explosions. I will put the link down below. I want to thank you guys so much um, and enjoying everything here on Patreon. And I'm sure this track will end up on the main channel sooner than later. So you guys, thank you so much. I'm digging through the suggestions. A little bit at a time, I'm getting through it. All right, guys. Aloha.